If you've ever gone through analytics and wondered if you really needed all the information that it gave you, well, you actually don't. So in this Google Analytics guide, you're going to learn the only reports and features that you actually need to drive sales and leads or just improve your content and make sure that you create more content that actually brings in more audience members. So timestamps below, along with some other helpful videos I'll be referencing as we go through Google Analytics because we are going to 90-10 this process. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is the confusion around UA or Universal Analytics and GA4 or Measurement IDs with the new version of Google Analytics. And you actually still need to have both of these on your website. So if you had Universal Analytics in the past and then you install the new Measurement ID for GA4, then you're already good to go and you don't have to worry about it. If you've only set up the new version of Google Analytics, then you actually need to go back and add Universal Analytics as well. And I'm going to show you why in the very first step, but Step number zero here is actually going to be making sure that you have both. So we're going to jump into the Google Analytics interface here. Now I've gone down here and clicked on settings already, and you're going to want to have one account for your company, and then you're going to want to have one, pro actually two properties for your website. So if we click in here, you'll see my personal website. We have two different versions. We have one for GA4 and one for UA. Now, Google, it doesn't make it really all that easy to create a new property using the old interface UA because they want everyone to use GA4, right? So once you click on create property here, you're actually going to need to click on advanced options and then click on universal analytics. So if you're setting analytics up for the first time, you need to go through this process once clicking to have universal analytics and then you need to go through this process again, not clicking analytics, so you have both. Okay, so that does it for the structure. Let's go ahead and actually dive into the interface and go through the single most powerful part of Google Analytics, and you don't need to know any coding in order to do this. This is by far my favorite, and it's going to demonstrate why you actually need to have both on your website. And of course, this is going to be your traffic reports. That is being able to clearly see where all your website visitors are coming from. So you're going to be able to see the source and medium and the difference between source and medium. Medium is just a adjective of the type of traffic that came from the source. So as an example, if you're running Facebook ads, then your source would be Facebook, but then your medium would be advertising or, or ads or paid versus if it was just an organic post that got you traffic, then it would be Facebook and the medium would be organic. And we will get into campaign and content in a moment here. So first I want to show you why this is so powerful and cool. And then I will talk about a link in the description to set up all of these tracking links. Again, you don't have to know any coding. So I'm going to kick things off in, UA, in Universal Analytics, and then I'll show you how to do it in GA4. So don't worry, we're gonna bounce back and forth here. So we'll go ahead and click on acquisition, and then we're going to click on campaigns. And I'm going to click on all campaigns. And what you're looking at right here is a list of all of the different lead magnets that we have for this particular website. So as an example, one of our lead magnets is a tag manager playbook. It just helps people organize their tracking codes. And you can see that we've had about 108 visitors over the past, I think this is 30-ish 30, 30 days. So what's really cool though, is maybe I want to know the specific video that drove these particular viewers to our site. So what you can do is you can click on secondary dimension and then you can search for ad content or you can go ahead and come down to, wow, there we go. Come down to advertising and click on ad content. And now I'm actually able to see the individual videos that are driving traffic to the site. So this is the single most powerful part of analytics. And this is something, uses something called UTM parameters. So you can set up, this is 100% free, you can set up tracking links. So every time you share a blog post, a Facebook post, or you're just sending out some emails, you can create these links and Google Analytics will be able to see exactly where people came from. So I will link up in the cards and the description to a full blown tutorial that goes A to Z and everything in between to setting up these links. This is something that I highly recommend you do right after you watch this video because the rest of the reports you actually won't have to set up, but this is the one thing that you're actually going to have to do some extra work with. Now, the reason that you have to have Universal Analytics is because the new version of GA4 does not allow you to do this. So if we come over to acquisition, that is 
where did people come from? And we will click on traffic acquisition to see our traffic sources. Again, you're seeing two, the, two views of the exact same site. Just one's 28 days and the other's 30 because Google likes messing with us, right? So you can see here we have YouTube, organic. We had 600, a total of 600 people come to our site. And then we can scroll down here and I guess we got a couple of people from Bing and Yahoo. So apparently people still use Bing and Yahoo, although I digress. So what is not available in the new version of Google Analytics, Google Analytics 4 that you're looking at, is the ability to actually break down your campaigns. So when you set up those UTM links, again, card link in the cards and the description, you can see here we can click on the campaign so we can see the exact same list of campaigns as we can see in GA in Universal. So sorry, this is Universal and this is GA4. It's supposed to be the same data and the same list. The only problem is when you come over here to click to see the specific content, terms, or some other information that you might have in your link, you don't have any of that information. So if I go here and look for add content, it doesn't show up. And so it's not because Google Analytics 4 is broken, it's because it's not here. In fact, six months ago when it was initially launched, you couldn't even see your campaigns. So this is a work in progress product. That's why you need to have both, have Universal and have Google Analytics 4. So that does it for the first thing that you should look at. And of course, the first step you should take when it comes to getting Google Analytics all set up correctly for you. Now, the next one is going to be better understanding your audience. And that is who is actually on your website. And this is going to be some age, gender, and location reports. Those are the three that I recommend using. There are some additional reports that you can run in the universal analytics, but I've found we've actually found that they don't actually help all that much. So let's go back into UA and we'll see where we can see this information. So if we click on audience, we can come down to demographics and then we can come down to overview. And I'm actually going to skip geo behavior and technology because I'll do that in the new version since it's actually working over there. And here we can see that this is an estimation of the breakdown of genders and ages of who visited the site over the past 30 days. So that's universal analytics. So if this information is important to you, you can take a deeper dive into the ages and genders, and then you can also break it down by location. So if you want to see the ages of who's coming from one country versus another, you can actually do that inside of universal analytics. All you need to do is click on secondary dimension and go ahead and look for location or you can go to the location report. Now inside of universal analytics, or not inside of GA4, I'm even getting confused here. So inside of the new version of Google Analytics, what you'd want to do to get location information is to come down to demographics here and click on overview. You can tell I'm, I'm still getting used to this new interface. And you'll be able to see a breakdown of countries and cities of where people are physically located when they visited your site, unless they're using a VPN, in which case the information is probably useless. Although that's probably a small percentage of the people visiting your site. But you can see here, gender and interests and age don't show up at all. So it's not because Google Analytics 4 isn't working, it's just not collecting that information. And if we go back to UA, you can see that it's being collected in the old version, but it's not being collected in the new one. So again, this is why you need to have both, which of course is really annoying because you have to go back and forth. You can tell that Google Analytics 4 will eventually have this information because if we click on demographic details and come over to the table down here, we'll actually in the future be able to add something like gender and then we'll be able to have that breakdown that we have in Universal. Although right now you can see no data is available. So go ahead and use Universal Analytics for age and gender location and or information. <laughs> and then go ahead and use Universal or then go ahead and use GA for the new version of analytics for your location information. You can also come down here to tech and look at different devices and web browsers. But this is an example of information that's nice to know, but is not actually going to push your business or content forward because we all know our content needs to look good on a desktop and it needs to look awesome and load fast on mobile. You don't need analytics to tell you that. So now that we know who approximately is visiting our site and where they're visiting it from, now it's time to take a look at the behavior. What are they actually doing on our site? 
And this is where Google Analytics can really, really shine. And this is going to lead us into the final section, which has a lot of setup. So here we're going to look at a tool that is really cool and awesome right out of the box. You don't have to do any sort of setup. So I'm gonna start with the old version of Analytics because again, it has things set up for us. So we can click on behavior here. And then what you're going to do is click on behavior flow. Yes, there's a bunch of other reports in there. You can look at those, but we are 90 tending this process. So what we're looking at here, first of all, this, these white boxes aren't actual pages. The green is where the pages are. So this is just telling me the link that someone clicked, and this is where UTM links are helpful. But go ahead and ignore these white boxes for now and just focus on the green one. So what this is showing us is the first page someone hits when they come to our website, because obviously not everyone comes to our website through our homepage. You'll link you know, across the web to a landing page, to a specific blog post. And so what this is telling us is our most popular pages. And then it's also telling us what people do after they come to that page. So as an example here, our second green box is actually a collection of 35 pages. So all you need to do to actually be able to see the group is click on group details, and then you'll be able to see the individual URLs. But with so few, with such little traffic between those, what this does help us with is understanding, okay, on average, when someone comes to our website and they've gone through our blog posts, which is this grouping of 35 different blog posts, what did they do next? And so this is really helpful in understanding, okay, well, maybe we should have more links to the product page in our blog posts, or maybe we need to have more links to the content page or our courses. And so this can kind of help you understand where people are trying to go on your site. And then you can make it super easy by just including a link to wherever the average number of people want to go next after visiting a page. So as an example here, another example here, I'm saying example a lot. So as another example here, you can see we have our tag manager playbook, what we talked about with the campaigns. And you can see that here, we just have a bunch of people and they drop off, right? And that's because we have a landing page, they enter their name and email, and then they're hit with a page that says, check your email, right? Well, if we have all these people and they're just dropping off, maybe we can find another piece of content or some other offer that we can put so that this doesn't just drop off right here and people continue to engage with their content and our site. Now you can do something similar inside of GA4 and I think the tool inside of GA4 is going to be really, really cool once they actually finish making it, right? So all we need to do is come down here to explore and analysis. Sorry, my mic's blocking the, the screen here and click on analysis hub. And then you can click on path analysis and funnel analysis. So funnel analysis is really, really great if you have a, if you're driving sales on your website. Otherwise, just go ahead and use the path analysis tool. Now, this one isn't going to be as intuitive or easy to use as the one in Universal, which is why we started there. But you're actually able to use your custom events, look at your conversions, and of course, add some location and eventually demographic information as well. So this is something that you can really, really dive into. And of course, you also wanna make sure that you're not building these out and you only have a few hundred or few thousand visitors. So you might just need to wait a while to have enough data in order to have some significant insights here. So that does it for understanding what people are doing on your site, the behavior. The final step of our process is going to be leads and actions. And that is setting up conversions and setting up events. Now there's a huge asterisk before we dive in. Everything we've talked about so far, you can do without touching a line of code. This part is where you go from analytics 1.0 to 2.0. So you go from beginner to intermediate and expert when it comes to events and conversions. So I'll quickly show you where they are inside of Universal Analytics. So I'm going to get out of this analysis hub and I'll go ahead and click on events here. And you can see that there are some events already set up. And if I click on conversions, there are no conversions set up. So what these two tools allow you to do is actually start telling Google Analytics, hey, when someone does this on our website, I want you to count it as a sale, or I want you to count them as a lead, or I want to say that this person has taken a significant action in terms of actually spending X amount of time on a page to completing watching a video. The sky's really the limit 
when it comes to conversions and events. And the reason that this is so powerful and cool is eventually you can actually take this information and use it in your advertising. So if you have a tutorial and you know, if someone makes it 50% through your video, they're probably interested in your product or service. Well, you can actually set up an event so that you can start targeting those people who've actually watched 50% as opposed to targeting everyone who hit the page and you know, 90% of the people probably don't watch 50%, so you're just advertising to people who you know aren't a good fit. But thanks to the power of analytics, you're going to be able to really dive into exactly what people are doing and of course be really, really spot on with your marketing. Now, of course, the downside is you have to get into your data layer and there's a lot of intricacies. So I recommend checking out Measure School and Analytics Mania. Those two channels have really great videos on exactly how to dive into your data layer, whether you're on a WordPress site or a different kind of site and start to set these up. Or you can just go over to Upwork and find an expert to do it for you. Either way, I will link up in the description to their channels and some recommended videos to take a deeper dive. Because even if you want to hire someone else, you at least need to know what you need to ask for and what they're going to be doing to your analytics and website. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. And most importantly, you feel a lot more comfortable with analytics and a lot more comfortable ignoring a lot of the information in there because it's just not going to be helpful when it comes to driving more leads and sales or just figuring out what kind of content you should continue to make. So hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive marketing tutorials just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.